Yeah, sex is always sold. I mean, yeah, there's no mystery there. People have always been interested in really two things, murder and sex. And if you can bring the two things together, it's all the better. Someone like the London Monster is guaranteed to be of media interest because it's just so unusual. And that, that link between female victims, and women are always of interest, and the strangeness of his offenses, it's just, it's, it's media gold dust, really. In my opinion, and coming from the perspective of an historian of forensic medicine, I would say that the London monster, whether or he was or was not Renwick Williams, was definitely a sexual sadist. This kind of sexual sadism was recognized formally by psychiatrists towards the end of the 19th century, and it was written about explicitly by an Austrian named uh, Richard von Kraft Ebbing, who labeled it picarism, which is a form of sexual sadism wherein an individual, generally a man, gets sexual pleasure from causing harm to women by stabbing them in some way. And in the case of the London Monster, this was accompanied by sexual epithets and cursing, it needn't always be that way, but generally the point is that this is a person who has a sort of sexual dysfunction and they can only get pleasure from causing harm to women. Well, we know that Renwick Williams, once he was released from prison after serving his six years, he got married, had a child, lived out a normal life with his family. That doesn't prove or disprove uh, his guilt as the London monster. It's unlikely, however, that someone addicted to picarism, as apparently the London monster was, would just suddenly stop because he'd gone to prison. It therefore raises the question, was Renwick Williams really the London monster? I think it's impossible to say one way or another. So it is entirely possible that there was not one single London monster, but several London monsters. And Renwick Williams may have been one of them. Maybe he wasn't. We will never know.